Hello everyone, welcome to today. I hope someone can post the titles and I can get to share it. <clears throat> Hello Ida, everyone on um, Facebook, how are you today? Hello. Um, just tell me where you're joining from. Let me know where you're joining from. Okay, all our friends on Facebook. I hope that I hope we're live on Facebook. I'm trying to see all our friends on Facebook are joining. Joining from Agodo, nice, nice. Thank you for joining from Agodo. Hi, Pastor B. Tell me your name. Tell me where you're joining from. If you have any question, go ahead and ask. From Zimbabwe, hi, Miss Nenny from Zimbabwe. From New Jersey, hi, Bola from New Jersey. From Lagos, hi, follow me from Kent, hi. Um, Joel from Lagos, hi. Um, Nancy from Kenya, hello. Tumi from London, hello. Tumi, where are you from? Okay. Ola from Chicago. Toby from Amora Gardens. Lola from Dubai. Wonderful. Son is joining from Abelkota. That place is precious in my heart. And Ebony T from um from maryland where maryland is it are you in laurel are you in um silver spring hi danny from castina and um sv damilola also jacob is watching all right All right, so let, let's start this. So this is what I wanted to do. Um, this one, so today we're going to talk about dealing with marital delay. And um, last week we had some very huge breakdown over the internet, and this week is going to be a lot better than that. So this is what I hope that we can achieve today. So this is what I hope to achieve today. So as we talk about dealing with marital delay, I'm really hoping that the first thing is that this is what I'm hoping that number one, you can identify the cause of marital delay if it appertains to you. And number two, you can know exactly what to do about it. And number three, if you're dating, you can know what to do to keep your dating relationships. You can know what to do to keep your dating relationships. So all of you that are watching, if you want to get some of your friends to join, some of you have like a group of friends to join, that's a good time to get, you know, um, a group of friends to join. Now you can send in your question, you know, you can send in your question. Someone says, my question is, how, do, how does one who has been out of a relationship for three years and do a new relationship i have my walk up and down when i see myself okay okay that's good so let's get everyone to join and um we're going to take it from there we're going to take it from there okay we're going to take it from there are you sure my facebook is set live on harvester's ng all right okay 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 all right so 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 let, let's start this let's start this Maybe we should wait for one more minute and we can start after one more minute. Hi, Pastor Lois from India. How is what part of India? Um, Hyderabad, Mumbai, you know, what, what part of India? Hmm? Finish. Okay, so we're just gonna start now. So, so we're gonna just you know, um, we're going to start with that, and uh, we're gonna start with that. All right, so let's start. So um, today, 
So today, one of the things, so let's go. Are we ready? Posh from South Africa, Maiwa from London, Akosua from um, Ghana, I came from Alakuko, Lydia from Abuja. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, so we need to be on Harvesters NG, not Harvesters International Cruise Center. All right. Okay, so so let, let's go ahead and start this and all of us can um, do this together. So today we're talking about dealing with marital delay. So today we're talking about dealing with marital delay. And um, the first thing is, is I want to tell you two stories I listen to, you know, because sometimes, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes when I talk about marital delay, a lot of people think about it and they're like, um, when I talk about marital delay, a lot of people think about it and they think that, you are really referring to the ladies, but marital delay can actually be both male and female. Marital delay can be both male and female. So let me give you um, some stories. So there is um because of what I do, I I come in love with a lot of people, and one of the people I came with a guy is in his forties, and when I began to talk to him, one of the things he really said to me was this, that he doesn't know why he cannot seem to attract the right person. He doesn't know why he doesn't seem to be able to attract the right person and. He's really, really delayed. And, um, you know, and um, I remember that we sat down and I began to just talk to him about what could be the cause of delay. And in the course of our discussion, it broke down in tears and it was all crying. It was all broken just because of what we were sharing. And most of the time, what I've noticed is this. Delay, most of the time, why some delays are spiritual, I've noticed over time that a lot of delays has to do with the person has to do with the person uh, you know I, I i spoke to a girl you know and i spoke to a girl that was also delayed and this girl began to express to me the pain and the frustration that she has gone through you know just trying to get married and you know as we had conversation you know what she said to me he said thank you so much for taking time to talk to me because i never realized you know that i could be the one causing my delay so the first thing i want to talk about today and this is I, will, I want to warn you ahead of time. So I'm, I'm going to kind of move back a little because some, last week was epileptic in our podcast. So when we talk about delay, the first thing that... So someone says, are all delays spiritual? Not all delays are spiritual. Delays are caused in three ways. Number one, delays can be spiritual, some by some spiritual forces. Delays can be self-made. This is where you are the one that is responsible for your delay. Someone says, how am I responsible for my delay? I'll tell you, I'll give you a good example. When you get involved with someone that you know is not going to marry you and you stay in that relationship for such a long time and you know you you just stay there and when it's time to move on you move on but a lot of people have moved on also that's some kind of delay that is some kind of delay so, so that is self-made delay you decide to take a decision that will hinder you from getting married you stayed in a relationship that you knew was heading nowhere because you felt comfortable with it so the third type of delay is this, you know, so there's, there, there's a spiritual, there's what we do, but there's subconscious, where it's, where, where it's the way, where it's something in your subconscious, it's something in the mindset that is really, you know, that is really, really, really just working against you. So today I want to say something to you firstly, and I want to deal with the concept, which I started but I never really got around to finish, about being lovable. So the reason why a lot of people are delayed is this. This is why they feel delayed. Deep down in their heart, they really think that nobody's going to love me the way I am. They, that's what they really believe. They may be looking for wood to date them. They may be looking for wood to marry them. They may look for a lot of things. But deep down in their heart, they really believe that nobody wants to love them. So, so, so I, 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 I'll give you, I'll, I'll, and I will tell you what it is. And the reason why you see some ladies, you say that, hey, you know, how, how are you doing when it comes to marriage? You say, oh, you know, you know, I'm big. That's why I don't have a boyfriend. You know, as some say, you know, I'm skinny. Some say, I'm not curvy. Guys, some guys will say that, you know, you know, I don't have money. That's why girls don't love me. And the reason why is that a lot of people have attached so much to love and say, if I'm going to be loved, I'm going to be this way. If I'm going to be loved, I'm going to be that way. And the truth is that for some people, I really understand where you're coming from. But the challenge is that if that's what you believe about yourself, then that's a big challenge. A lot of people don't... So, so, so the first thing is this, why am I delayed? Because first of all, if you're not lovable, and you're not lovable as a quality of being in love with yourself, 
If you don't know what love is, you will not be able to attract love. That's what I'm going to. If you don't know what love is, you will not be able to attract love. As a matter of fact, I know people, you know, someone said to me one time and I was, you know, like helping out. They said, this guy really loved me. And the moment he got serious, I began to panic. I was afraid. And I said to the lady, I said, the reason why you began to panic is this. Although you wanted to really love, guess what? You did not know what love is. So as soon as love appeared to you in form of a guy coming to meet you, you began to panic. You began to shake. You went around and broke everything away. But that's what it is. So, so as we talk about dealing with delay today, you need to find out if the delay is something within your system. If the delay is something within your system. And if this is making sense to you, you can go ahead and invite your friends to join because I think this will help someone. And if you're dating, you will also find the content very, very use useful. So let's talk about being lovable. Let's talk about being lovable. So number one, a lot of people believe they are not lovable because number one, they feel as if, if I'm lovable and I'm great, why is nobody here? So where do we get this concept from? Because, because we, wh wh where do we get the concept that we're not lovable from? Number one, we get it from past experiences. So maybe it's a guy dating a girl or it's a girl dating a guy. And the press of dating, the person that you really love actually broke up with you. And when they broke up with you, you just became downcasted and the person left your life. And you define the fact that you're not lovable because a guy left your life or a girl left your life. Listen to me. Even when people leave you, all of the great qualities that they saw in you before they started dating you is still in you and nothing has changed. You cannot determine that because someone else moved on from you, that that means that, you know, you're on love. You don't even know what's going on with them. Sometimes the people that move on from us are the biggest blessings that we have. And I'm saying so to you because when you want to help people really date, one of the things you can ask yourself, if you want to tell them that um, you want to date, maybe you should go out some more, maybe you should do this some more, maybe you should do that some more. And all those are really great suggestions. But deep down, either you go out some more, you spend some more money, you, you look better. Deep down in your heart, if you don't have that mindset that I am good, that I am lovable, you will not be able to attract people to yourself. So, why do people feel they're not lovable? Number one, because of the experiences. You know, because of the experiences. So, you were dating this lady called Shinene, or you were dating this guy called Victor, you know, or Sean, and you had a terrible breakup and it walked out of your life, and you're like, oh my God, if I was that awesome, how can so walk out of my life? Listen to me, you cannot judge who you are based on somebody else's action. That's not a wise thing to do. And that's why a lot of you are really challenged. You love you are really challenged. So, you let so you had the breakup, but since then you had an inferiority complex that I'm not good enough. And unfortunately, once you feel as if you're not lovable, it, it just affects things. Let me give an example. And I went through a, a decision like this. How did I go through this? There was a lady I really liked when I was single, you know, and um, you know, I was really hoping she would be the one and all of those kind of things. Long and short of the story, she told me she didn't have a boyfriend. And she told me she didn't have a boyfriend. She had a boyfriend. And, you know, and the boyfriend just called me on the phone and began to really insult and abuse me. And I felt, oh my God, nobody's going to love me. And listen, I, although I felt nobody was going to love me, it was from a deep place in my heart. I personally felt I was unlovable. I personally felt that way. And some of you are listening to me. And, and, and why are you not lovable? Number one, because of your experience. And number two, it can be from childhood. Some of you were raised in a home where, you know, your parents, the way they raised you, did not really show you a lot of love. So, you know, you will hear things like, um, you know, you did well, I love you so much. You did well in school, I love you so much. You did this, I love you so much. But when you don't do so well, they don't love you. So, in your mind, love is something you have to perform to get. Love is what they don't give you, you have to perform to get. So, from when you were a child, you cannot even confidently say, you, you know someone you're proud that your parents love you. But you cannot deeply, deeply say, I know I feel loved. And let me tell you something. Once you don't feel loved, you're going to get desperate. And that's the Bible story of two women in the Bible. Rachel and Leah. Those two women were married to a guy called Jacob. In my estimation from the whole story I see, the person I think is a fantastic wife is Leah. But unfortunately, Jacob was really attracted to Rachel. Um, Jacob was attracted to Rachel. That was Jacob's attraction. 
You know, but, but you know what? Leah was the better person. Leah was the one that would keep to the rules. Leah was the one that was, you know, although she, you know, she didn't, you know, Rachel seemed more beautiful than her physically, but life is more than, marriage is more than who looks more beautiful or who doesn't look more beautiful. Marriage is more than none of that. So the reason I'm saying this to you today is this. The reason I'm saying this to you today is this. Because there's a lot going on. So eventually, um, Jacob focuses love on Rachel, on Rachel. And you know what that did to Leah? Leah became so desperate. And once you feel you're unlovable, you're going to take measures that is going to make you look desperate. Someone says, well, nobody knows I'm desperate. Listen to me. No matter you hide the desperacy because you're literate, because you're intelligent, it's going to show. It's like a smell. You can hide the smell. It's going to, it's going to come out one way or the other. And how do people just get to a point where they feel they're not lovable? People feel as if they're not lovable just because, please, all of you posting questions, you need to kind of slow down because I cannot read your question because I'm speaking until, you know, we can bring back the question and answer time. So a lot of people feel they're not lovable just because of how they were treated as a young child. Some of you, your parents did not have time for you and you tell yourself, the reason my parents don't have time for me is because I'm not a great girl. I'm not a great guy. You've grown up right now, but you're still connected to that thought. <clears throat> you feel as if the reason why my father doesn't have great time for me because I'm not lovable. And you struggle with that personally. And this is it. Even when you find love, because you're not used to love, and some of you that are dating, this is the reason why. So you find this awesome girlfriend, and this will happen to a lot of girls, because sometimes you don't know why the guy walks away, and you're an extremely nice girlfriend. Now, let me say something to you. You can think you're an extremely nice girlfriend, and really you're not. You can think you're an extremely nice boyfriend, and really you're not. But sometimes you are extremely nice girlfriend and boyfriend, and the guy just walks away. And the reason why they walk away is nothing you did. It's just the fact that they cannot, they cannot cope, deal with, interact, you know, have companionship that has genuine love. The reason why is that we all don't gravitate towards what we want. We gravitate towards what we're familiar to. I'll give an example. If you get to, a, to an airport and you see you're black and you just see five black people in the airport and you need direction, the tendency that you gravitate towards the black people is so high because everybody gravitates towards what's familiar to them. If you're a white person, you get to the airport, they're just five white people, you will most likely gravitate towards all the white people. And the reason why that we all gravitate towards what we're familiar with, it's like food. If they put a lot of food on the table, you'll find yourself eating the things you normally eat. Not because that's what you want to eat, but that's what you're familiar with. So what does that mean? We all generally will gravitate towards what we're familiar with. So if you're not familiar with love, you will not find yourself gravitating towards love. You will gravitate towards what, what is not love because that's what you're familiar with. And it's such a subconscious programming. It's such a subconscious programming. And I'm saying so because, so the reason why, and this is the reason why people always date in a pattern. They always date in a pattern. They always, so you date 10 different guys or 10 different girls, but somehow when you listen to the story and listen to all of the things, the same things kind of happen. And the reason why is that you are dating the same person in different bodies. It's just what they are. You are dating the same girl in different bodies. You are attracted to the same kind of ladies, the same kind of guys in different bodies. That's just what it is. So why am I saying that to you today? So I'm saying that to you because how do we learn we're lovable? And this is it. The moment you don't know you're lovable, the moment you don't know that, oh my God, I'm lovable, then you will not be able to attract love because it's, it's a love attraction. It's whatever you saw you rip. Let me give you a good example. Have you seen people that, I don't know, if you can testify to this online, and if it makes sense to you, just type, it makes sense to me. Have you seen people that they were single all their life and they got a boyfriend or they got engaged and from that time, the rate of people that say asking them out or toasting them just exploded. Has it happened to you before? Let me get some response. Let me get some response. This has happened to me before. Let me get some response. And you know, this time they were single for three years. Nobody came around. But the moment they got engaged, they found a boyfriend, it just exploded. Everyone just said popping up. They're like, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. Oh, wow. And, and, and the person goes like, what, what is happening right now? So I said, what is happening right now? And what is happening right now is just simple. What's happening is this. Because your heart is now full of thoughts of love and attraction, you begin to attract those things to you. 
all the time you were desperate for a girlfriend, desperate for a boyfriend, you never found any. But now that your thought is full of all this positive thought, you're just attracting them. Everybody just is really just coming to you. Everybody just really just coming to you. Oh, thank you, um, Pinky, for telling me that it happened so many, so many times. Thank you, Isaac, I really, you know, it just coming to you. But what changed was not the guy. What changed was this. Because you got into a relationship and the state of your mind changed, because we live from the inside, the Bible says in the script, as a man thinketh in his heart, the moment you entered into a place of rest, the moment you entered into a place of assurance and your thought love, that released that attraction of those people to come into their life. That, that, that's what happened. So why don't we feel love? The first thing is this. This is the reason why I don't feel love. The first reason I don't feel love is this. Number one, because of background. We were raised by people that, you know, that didn't show us love. We wanted their attention. You, you remember as a child when you'd be crying, Daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. Mommy, don't go. Mommy, don't go. And they will have to go. And you will think that the reason why they're not giving you attention is because of that. And that's why most of you as adults, you know what? You are still seeking attention. It's the child in you. It's the child in you. I spoke to a lady and I said, well, I could be in a relationship and he said, I'm just struggling. I said, why? He said, my father died when I was young and I'd always felt that any, and I loved him. He said, I've always felt that anybody I love would just leave me at some point. He said, that's why I've not been able to give myself to another man just because of something that happened in the past. And some of you, that's exactly what has happened so far. Some other people, and let me just say quickly, if you want to invite your friends to join, go ahead and invite them, tag them, share with them, get them on the phone and ask them to join. This is going to get deeper. We still have about 15 more minutes before the end of this. So, so th that is really good. So the other reason why also a lot of us don't feel love available is this. You want to hear this? If you want to hear this, let me know. The reason why a lot of us don't feel lovable is this. Because of social, of media. Not just social media. Social media magazines. Media, generally. You know, because media defines to us what beauty is. Media defines to us what perfection is. So, you will hear ladies say things like, you know, you know, I'm not lovable. I, I'm not so great because I don't have a pack body. It says, I, I need a body like Beyonce. I want to look like Kim Kardashian. I want to look like all those people because if I look at them, I will be really lovable. And all those things are big nonsense. That I'm sure in your country, I'm sure where you're watching from, there's a, there's a lady or there's a guy that is purple on social media. You know, in my country, I was a guy that used to show so much wealth and everybody just kind of loved him because he was so rich. And the guy says, if I can be like him, I will have girls flocking to me. Because the media tells us that this is the picture of the one that is accepted as lovable. She, she is six feet tall or three feet tall. Her hips are like a bo bouncing ball, you know, and she looks this way in the front and that way at the back and this other way. And all those things are crap. Because... Beauty is very personal, and beauty is that I have the beholder. Or they'll say, you know, for you to be lovable, you must be the guy that can throw away dollars. You know, you turn on your Instagram page, it's all dollar, 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 or you're just showing us your, your big G wagon and, you know, this other, you know, time. And say, that's what makes you lovable. So, what happens to you is that you look at yourself and you can, and you have those pictures in your head. You have those pictures in your head. And for that reason, you say, nah, I'm not lovable. And the worst part of this, of belief is this. Whatever you believe, you become. Whatever you believe, you become. Someone says, which one are prettier? Dark colors, dark skinned girls or light skinned girls? I want to ask you something. At the end of the day, it's skin color. It's skin color. It's preference. I know people that can never date a light skin girl. I know people that can never date a dark skin girl. So I said, which is the better race to marry? African, Asian, Croatian, or what? I said, it just all depends on you. But when you came to, you know, you know, but when you get to the point where you when you really feel that for me to be lovable, I have to be this. Because let me tell, let me tell you something that you need to know. And this is what Jesus Christ demonstrated to us. Real love. Real, authentic love is never perfect. This is what the Bible says. It says, while we're yet sinners, it's a Christ died for us. Because 
all those pictures you see on social media, all those things that have blonde hair, that you know, you know, they have, you know, their bomb is so amazing and the side is so amazing and the guys that have the g wagon and they will pose like this and when the pose you see the ap watch or you see the rolls royce and all the girls say pick me i love you baby hot pony come oh sugar 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 you know and they see all those things you know the truth those are not the standard of love i'm telling you the truth how do i know that do you notice that most of those people their husband or their wife still cheat on them most of those people, when you read their stories online, they are so unhappy. If that's your picture of love, then it's all messed up. But what has happened is that media has defined for us what love is. And we are not looking up to it. Real love is more than that. See, love is work. Real love, love is work. Because to love somebody else, it's something you have to work on. To love somebody else, it's what you have to work on. So we will pick up all these pictures. And let me say something to you, all of you that are dating here. Even if you're dating, you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or you're even married, and in your marriage, you will struggle if you don't love yourself. And the reason why you struggle is this. It's just difficult to give what you don't have. And it's hard to receive what you do not know. And that's why you see a partner, you do so much, is never able to appreciate all what you've done because it's just difficult to give what you don't have. If you don't have love, you cannot give it. If you don't have love, you don't know what love is. When someone shows you love, you would, you would, you want to call it, you will find difficult to receive it. One someone came to me and said, you know, I want to break up with my boyfriend. I said, why do you want to break up with my boyfriend? He said, it's very, very simple, sir. He said, because he's all over me. I said, oh, wow. I thought that was what everyone wanted. Someone that was all over you. How come that's even for you? Because in your own way, you didn't just use to that kind of love. And you see people in the marriage, because people entered the marriage, and this is a very funny concept. People entered the marriage, and they're hoping that their partner can make them happy. Listen to me. If you, as much as you love yourself, and you know yourself, and the details you have with yourself cannot make you happy. How do you think someone else that met you six months ago, one month ago, doesn't know you as you know you, doesn't know your history, your value, the things you've been through can make you happy? That is a daunting task. And I'm saying to you today because, because, it, 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 because the moment you feel you're lovable, that signal goes everywhere. It's obvious. I can tell from a mouth, you, you meet a guy and you're like, oh, wow. This guy is struggling with love. You, you can tell. See, once you feel not lovable, you will take actions and decisions that are consistent with your belief system. And those things will just keep repelling other people away from you and repelling other people away from you and repelling other people away from you. For example, for example, you know, for example, you know, um, I, I, I saw a girl recently and she came to me for counseling. And she was like, you know, I'm just tired of sleeping around. And I said, why do you sleep around? He said, well, I have needs. And when people help me, the way I know how to say thank you to them is by sleeping with them. And, you know, I wish I could say, I don't understand what you're doing. But I said, hey, lady, I understand you. But what you've done right now is the way you've been trained. You've been trained that the way to say thank you is by having sex with a stranger. And I'm saying so to you because, uh, it, because she doesn't know how to receive love. She doesn't believe that someone can love you and do something for you. I know someone that someone was being so kind to him and, you know, and being so loving to him and said, excuse me, please, what exactly do you want? Why are you being so kind to me? People are never kind to me for, for no just cause. What do you want? I, I don't want to ask for something I can't give back. The question that the way they've been raised, they've been used to love that, do me, I do you. That's the kind of love it is. It's a kind of vengeful love. It's a kind of, I repay you back of love. And I'm saying, this is what I'm saying to you. And all of you that really over 40, you know what, what, you know what I've discovered over 40 people? <laughs> they've gotten to a point where they're like, you know what, I'm just tired. And that's it, I've had enough. And they're like, I want marriage, but I can come and kill myself. I mean, you need some kind of philosophy to keep you sane if you've been single for a long time. But the question I want to ask you is this. Do you love yourself? What I've noticed with singles that are older, 38, 
40, 42, 45, they don't take them, they don't take care of themselves. They are never very kind to themselves. They have money, most of them feel guilty about enjoying that money. Most of them feel bad about taking care of themselves. And the reason why is that is the value that place on themselves personally. Let me tell you something. I want you to pay attention here. If you love yourself, you will be so easy for someone else to love and spot. It will be hot. The reason why is that there's something about, listen, as a guy, if I see a girl that, you know, has a lot of love for herself, I want to be in the party because I'm hoping that that love can be contagious. But unfortunately, when you see some people that are older singles, they are really and extremely, extremely, they are struggling, struggling with everything. You get to their house, you know, you can see the moodiness in their house. You can see the moodiness. They, they're just a moodiness around them. You know, you, you know some of them will even travel, but there's, it, it, it's just, even when they do something for themselves, there's just a lot of guilt that comes with them doing something for themselves. And let me just say this to you. You can only give what you have. The first place, because I can say, because I, I don't know how to explain this to you. And maybe I said it earlier. I said, how do you explain this? A lady was single for two years. No serious guy came around her. A guy asked her out and they got engaged. And from the moment they got engaged, one month after, 10 guys show up and say, I want to marry you. And you're like, where were you guys all along? The reason why is this. Because she got engaged and her state of mind was filled with that mindset that I'm loved, I'm lovable, I'm attractive, I'm beautiful. She began to attract people like that. You know the thing? Most older singles just really think I'm not lovable, I'm not attractive. That's what they think. And the bad part of thinking that is it. If you think I am not lovable, I am not attractive... If you want marriage, then you're going to have to hate yourself because your philosophy says there's something wrong with me. But if you feel, if you change that thinking and say, I am lovable, I am attractive, I may just need to learn some things to unleash my attractiveness to another level, then that's something you have to do. Most people that are delayed single personalize that delay and they hold themselves responsible personally for your delay. And something about marriage you have to know is this. There's something you have to know. As much as it's in your control, it's also not within your control. There's another person that is going to connect with you that you cannot force, you can only attract, you cannot compel, you can only attract. And the best you can do is what you're doing. And the moment you become frustrated, the moment you become desperate, listen to me, all those negative energy are counteractive. Even when you dress up and you wear all this nice makeup and leave all the pictures that are really seductive, it doesn't work because your energy, your desperation cancels out every single thing. It cancels every single thing. So, let's begin to wrap this up so that we can have some time for some good questions. And maybe I want to say something. The way you ask people if they are single or not, you have to be careful because you need to be careful because that's also a dangerous place to be. Of course, a lot of you know that next week that um, um, my wife is going to have a session for ladies. And if you want to plug into that, there's a phone number that we posted in the last two podcasts. And you can link up with that because there are just some private things I and my wife would love to share with ladies from where they are. And one of the beats for them, we pray together every morning to Wednesday, Friday, and you want to follow that prayer. So I, I, as I round this up, the question now is this. Okay, why am I not lovable because of my background? So I came from, a, from people that didn't show me love. The way things happen. I've even noticed that children blame themselves if their parents get divorced. I don't know if you know that. Children blame themselves. They were like, maybe it's because of me that my, my dad got divorced. The second thing, the second thing is this. So background, the second thing, why people feel they're unlovable because of an experience. So they say, this guy walked out of my life and this girl walked out of my life. Huh? And they say, the reason why this person walked out of my life was because I was not a fantastic person. Mm. Let me tell you something. Even when someone walks out of your life, all the great qualities that they saw that attracted them is still in you. They walked away. The qualities that you had in you did not work out with them. 
And I know that this is not your regular marriage teaching, that kind of thing. Because all the marriage teachers are going to say that, you know, go here and find guys and go here and find guys. But all those teachings, there's something fundamentally wrong with them. They're trying to use action to correct mindset and belief system. It doesn't work that way. In fact, once you have the right belief system, you will know what to do. You will know exactly what to do to get your husband. Because it will be so, it will be so, it will be so instructive as a mentor, as a mindset on the inside. So, um, Ben, you can help me put the number there and I can, you know, yeah, you, you can let me put the number there. Don't worry, just relax. I'm going to try to pin up the number. I'm on Facebook and on, 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 on social media. and ju just there. Okay, so, so the question now is that how, how, how do I deal with this? And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. A lot of you want quick fix. You want like, oh yeah, let them just, you know, pray and all of those kind of things. Sometimes it's going to be some prayer, but it's going to take a process because some of the most difficult things to deal with are mindsets. Some of the most difficult things to deal with are mindset. Someone says, um, someone says, what about people that are very critical? Someone, someone says, I was raised by very critical parents. Listen to me, everybody. Everybody, look at me. Everybody, look at me for a minute. For a minute. My experience is this. The people that are very critical of other people, they live a terrible life because they are first very critical about themselves before they can become critical of other people. So they are very, very unhappy personally. Personally, they're very unhappy. If I, if I, whatever they criticize you of, it's just a fraction of how they deal with themselves. And I'm saying so to you today because if you're a critical person, some of them will say, I have OCD, I'm easily irritable. Listen to me. You know why you're so that way? You can't even tolerate yourself. You're not even kind to yourself. You're the worst critic of yourself. Listen to me. If you're the worst critic of yourself, how can you find love? Because you keep on bashing yourself and bashing yourself and bashing yourself and bashing yourself and bashing yourself. Nobody's going to have self-confidence the way you bash yourself. Nobody. Someone says, what message can you recommend on mindset? I want to go to Harvest's TV, the message I preached last Sunday, um, last Tuesday, last Sunday, those three messages powerful. And this, uh, and what they call it, and this Sunday, I'm speaking about the same thing. Yeah, I'm speaking about the same thing. This Sunday is going to be really powerful. I'm talking about, I'm talking about this Sunday, how to change levels. So for the single people, it's going to talk about how to change level from being single to being married. And it's going to start from how to just fix that mindset. You can see the number. The number has been posted, so you can you can you can look the Facebook. You have the number. Um, I don't know if they posted it on on the Instagram. If they have, you can post again. I can attach it. So let's close this. I can take some questions. I I hope this has been helpful this evening. You can also still get some of your friends to join us quickly. You know, hey Max Sam, it's so nice. You know, yeah. Someone says critical people are the most nastiest. They are terrible people to be with. They will make you feel you're not enough. I understand that, but you know, the the choice of words you use are very strong. The choice your words you use are very strong. I'm not sure I'm able to use those very strong, those very strong words, you know. Yeah, and all of you from outside the country, um, from anywhere in the UK, the US, Canada, Egypt, Croatia, whatever you are from, send in a message to just send a WhatsApp message to the number and we can begin to fix it. So the question is this, this is this this what we'll answer before we go. So how can I? There's a question. How can I? And you, the video will be on on my IGTV, Facebook, and YouTube. You can also refer your friends. You can also refer your friends to come up and take it. So the question is this, how can I? Someone says, any advice for divorces? Well, there's not a forum for that. But maybe after the question and answers, we could, we could talk about it. You know, um, so someone says, how can I begin to change the way I'm thinking? How can I begin to change the way I'm thinking? The first thing is this. You want to listen to this right now. Everybody pay attention. How can I change the way I'm thinking? The mind listens to repetition. I love the way, I love the way my pastor says it. He says, repetition is a law of lasting impression. What does that mean? Whatever you tell your mind often enough, your mind will obey and begin to listen. So if you tell your mind and say, tell yourself and tell your body, I am lovable. I find it easy to love. Your mind will begin to adjust to that reality. 
How did your mind believe you're not lovable? That's what you told yourself. You said to yourself, could you believe that Victor broke up with me? Am I such a terrible person? I'm such a terrible person. Oh my God. Why is my life like this? There's nobody to love me. Nobody wants to love me. I don't have a boyfriend at 38 and you're heartbroken. And I understand all those things. But those things was the way you began to program your emotions and mindsets. I'm not lovable. And it began to happen to you. The second thing is this. That's the second thing. So the first thing is this. And let me tell you something. I wish it's something you can do in one day and it disappears. You didn't, but you didn't have this mindset in one day. You have to go over it over a period of time. Over a period of time. Over a period of time. So let me give the number. Follow me asking for the number. I'm not able to post on Instagram. It's um, 091, right? Three three one five five six zero one. So someone can type it, and I will just pin it up. It's o nine one three three one five five zero six one. So 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 some people are like that. Oh, this and this and this and this is happening. Thank you. Let me just pin that up. Okay, so the number is pinned up right now. So you can, um, if you're from after Nigeria, just put plus two, three, four in front of it, and um, you can, um, you can, you can do that. Okay, so, so, um, so the first thing you want to do is this. So the first thing you want to do is to begin to tell yourself that hey, I love, and just remember, it's gonna take. It's gonna be like an onion. You peel each skin, and there's a new thought. You peel each skin, there's a new thought. The second thing you want to also say is this. This is the second thing you want to say. So it's not just by saying I love myself. Number two, treat yourself with love. Give yourself experience that shows you love yourself. If nobody sends you flowers, send yourself flowers. Send yourself flowers. If nobody sends you a card, send yourself a card. If nobody takes you on dinner, take yourself on a dinner. The more you give yourself the feeling that you love, the more you express the love. Because, because what you're doing is this. You're creating experiences with outside that affect inside. That's what you need to do. Instead of saying, nobody's doing this and nobody's doing that and nobody's doing this. Hey, Chris, you know, you know what you have to do? See, girls, if, you, if I'm close to you and maybe I will do this. We didn't talk like a monthly girl out, girl's time out. We, we just take our money and just go somewhere and spoil ourselves silly. Let me tell you something. If two girls on the table or one girl and there are guys all around them and those girls, those guys, see the girls enjoying themselves, very soon the guys are going to come and say, can I join this table? And it has nothing to do with whatever they're saying or any kind of beauty or body shape. It's just the fact that these girls just seem to be the party here. So, treat yourself to love. I want to ask you, this week, can you send yourself some flowers? Send, you, you know, order flowers and send yourself. And you know you can, what you can do? You can even put a name there and say, this is from John. Okay, you know, put my name there and say, Pastor B, send me flowers. And send yourself some nice flowers. Send yourself a card. Take yourself to a nice restaurant and order some sumptuous meal and just have a great time. Listen to me. What are you doing is this. Things are changing because you're changing the way you program things. Rather, what people do, stay at home. Valentine is so horrible. Nobody's going to take me out. Nobody's going to buy me something. Nobody's going to do this. Nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to do this. Nobody's going to do that. Listen to me. The more you, and this is the thing about life, all those thoughts are negative. And guess what? The more you feel negative about relationship, the more you release negative vibes, negative energy that cancels out your positive desire for marriage. And that's, the, that's one of the issues with older singles. One of the issues older singles deal with is that because they've waited for such a long time and that can be heartbreaking, they get to a point where they just become a bit negative about it. And when you're negative, whatever you do is wiped out by it. Someone says, you know, what should I do? I really want you to listen to the message I preached last Sunday on believing and the one I preached opposite two Sundays and one Wednesday. It's all, it's out to receive from God. It's something about, um, it's um, activating law spiritual progress. It's all on YouTube for free. Go ahead and watch it. And tomorrow I'm continuing when I'm talking about changing levels tomorrow. And you can come physically or you can come, you know, you can, you can put a timer if you're out of the country. 
And if you want to reach out for some help, you know, a lot of you have reached out to me. I'm going to put out a calendar soon in which you can just type things yourself. And, do and if you want to do a girl's hangout, let me know you want to do a girl's hangout. I'm going to talk with some other girls. And we just, if it's guys hangout, let me know you want to do guys hangout. And this is what you also want to know. Love is not perfect. You must remember that. I don't have to be perfect to be loved. Who demonstrated it? Jesus. He says, for God so loved the world. The world was not perfect. This is what the, how the Bible says. He said, while we are yet sinners, this is how the Bible says it. He said, while we were yet sinners, he said, Christ died for us. My God. My God. My God. My God. So he says, you know what? I'm not lovable because I don't have a great shape. You don't need a great shape to be loved. That's the lie of the media. Have you seen that most times all the slave queens never have great marriages? Because in their mind, their body makes me lovable. But that's the same reason why they break up. Because the body gets old. There's always a hotter body the next day. There's always someone that has more money the next day. So all the guys that keep flaunting money and hope the flaunting their money will get the biggest girl. There's always going to be another guy that has big money. There's going to be a, guy, a girl that has bigger desires than you. You just need to realize and say, rest in yourself. You know why? I'm, you know why? You know why I'm lovable? Because love made me. Who is love? God. When Mercedes Benz makes a product, it's Mercedes Benz. When love makes a product, it's love. That's why I'm lovable. Because love made me. Because love made me. So I'm chilling with that. Love made me. And you know, um, let me also say this. A lot of you ladies abroad, I try to connect with guys back home. I'm trying to also create the opportunity for you if you're interested. Just put a comment, I'm interested because I just want to connect with some guys back home. And some guys here want to connect with guys abroad. Just put it there. We can also create an opportunity like that. Because my goal, let me tell you what my goal is. And if all of you are older singles, my goal is that God is going to make it happen for you. I'm telling you, even if you're older, single at 40, 43, 44, I have huge faith on your behalf. That this 2021, something big will happen. That's why I'm waking up every morning in the next level prayers. And you are joining me to pray. Because I'm believing that what I can do, what you can do, as we lift our voices up to God, God will open up the heavens for you. And let me close this. So. So, uh, get, oh yeah. So girls hang out in Abuja. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for girls hang out in Abuja. I'm ready for girls hang out in London. I'm ready for girls hang out, you know, um, in the US, in Maryland, in um, Texas, in uh, Atlanta. I'm ready for girls hang out. We're just going to have fun. Girls hang out in the UAE. I'm ready. So if you want to do that, send a message to the phone. Send me, a, s s send me something, you know. And guys that are on this, hey, join up. So let me say this to you finally. So how do you change this, number one? What are you saying? Let's say some things together. I want, I want to close right now. Uduak in South Africa, let's do this. Girls are up in Johannesburg, in Cape Town. Let's do this. I'm ready for it. Let's do this, please. Everybody, I want you to put your hands on your, on your chest here. Put your chest here. And say, I'm lovable. I'm worthy of love. I find it so easily to love. I find it so easy rather to love. I find it so easy to give love. I attract love for everywhere I go. I give love everywhere I go. Love is a natural thing to me. Love is easy for me. I love so much. I receive so much love. I am so lovable. I'm destined to find love and to attract love. I enjoy love because God is love and His love nature is all over me. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. So I want to say to you something. If this really helped you, this really helped you, give me, I want to post a comment. I'm going to post a video. 
let post a comment all of you that say you want to hang out in dubai in this and that you know when i post the video post the comment you can send a message to the phone number you can send me an email you know you can send me a lot of messages but tomorrow remember i'm going to teach about changing levels how you can move literally change your level in that area so connect online even a physical center i will teach in the first service in bagada in the next services in lekki and you can just connect with me personally i would love to meet you personally if you're coming make sure you let me know that you came because i invited you hallelujah 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 things have changed for you right now you're loved you're so full of love you're lovable you're attracting so much love people that don't notice you begin to notice you what you're not attracted to begin to attract because something has changed for you something that really really changed for you about our hangout let's know about the hangout next week i'm going to call i'm, I'm going to bring this to a close if you have questions post your questions we have four minutes for questions we have four minutes for questions all of you on facebook i'm not hearing you say something all my friends chair marker wonderful thank you jesus guest hangouts in lagos thank you do do you think are they thank you so tell me any questions and remember the video will be on replay so you can invite your friends to watch later what if you're about to make up your mind and several people just come at once what if you're trying to make up your mind and several people come at once what do you do um, do, do you think are they i think you need to watch the video i really thought about that earlier on so go back and watch from the beginning you'll see me ask that question how, how do we handle men that find it hard to express their feeling how do you handle them how do you handle men that find it hard to express their feeling the way you handle them is express your own feeling express your own feeling someone says how do you deal with spiritual delay by breaking by breaking the thoughts of delay so one of the thoughts of delay is this I am not lovable. One of the thoughts of the ladies is, why is nobody coming? You have to change that to a lot of people are coming. Someone said, I'm in Abuja. If you're in Abuja, just send me, you know, give me the church location. It's right there on my next post. It's on my, on my, on my Instagram. It's on WhatsApp. You can DM me. All of you in Abuja, just send me a, a, a message on, um, on the phone or DM. I, I'm, I'm trying to link up with you in Abuja. Awesome. How do you, um, someone said, what do you, do, what do you do when you pray for marriage and a man comes, but you get, um, but you get the food that you are not even sure what you want again. So that's the thing. That means you're not even sure what you want again. That's what it means. You're not even sure what you want again. So you need to be sure what you want before you do any other thing. Okay. Okay. There's some indication that the guy claims to love you, but he doesn't talk. He keeps things to himself so much. So if you feel as if a guy loves you, I was going to talk, why not have a conversation with him? I need a conversation. So let's assume his name is John. So be like, hey, John, you know, be like, um, just ask him the comment. If you, if you, you know, and just ask him, John, you know, I really think that this guy likes me, but he isn't saying much. What do you think I should do? And that can give you a clue of what to do because he's going to tell you what exactly you should do. How do you f deal with a man who doesn't like to give or commit financially? It's the question is that, does he know he doesn't like to give? Does he know that's important to you? You know, many, all of you that are dating, let me say this quickly. A lot of you are dating for some reason. You expect a lot from your partners without telling them. Listen, your partner is not God. Your partner is not the Holy Spirit. They need to know. So don't just say, I'm, I want to be more generous with me. Specify what generosity is. You know what? If you give me, if you, if you are able to help out, at this particular junctions with this kind of items i appreciate it a lot of people don't even know what their partners want they don't have the expectation you know that kind of thing so you know um are guys permitted to attend any of the ladies and that why not why not once you come to take yours home amen just know that you're coming to receive you're coming to receive how do you deal with trust issues i find it hard to trust well that's not something I can handle here. That's something that you may need to get maybe a paid counselor or a very experienced pastor to help you with it because it's a process. It's a process of that discussion because there's something that made you have lose trust in people and it's a gradual process of getting back. So you need, if you can afford to get paid counseling, I can recommend some people to you. Some of you need paid counseling, you know, because of what it is and all of that. So someone says, Pastor, why is it that men easily relate amongst themselves more than women? Women seem to ignore, snub each other and find each other hard in public. Um, blessing, I'm a man. Maybe you want to ask a woman that question. 
you know, you want to ask them that question. What do you think about putting a name to narrow down your choices? I don't know why you want to put a name to narrow down your choices. I don't know if that's faith. Someone says, Pastor, I'm in Abuja. Where do we hang out? You know, that's the thing. When you Abuja, is Abuja people organize the Abuja thing. So we're going to get a Ibano hangout. If we can pull Ibano guys together, we're ready for it. We're ready for it. Ajay Priscilla. Um, yeah, we're ready for it. We're ready for it. Okay. Okay. So just one more minute and we'll close. And can I get to pray for you? Can I get to pray for you? So let me say something to you. This next week in Lex Level Prayer, I want to invite you to your next level prayer on Monday. It's going to be fire. The reason why is that in next level prayer, if it's a spiritual barrier, I trust that the power of God will break it. And all of you that are older, especially all of you that maybe outside the country and you feel really challenged, and all of you that have friends that are outside the country, um, this might be one of the best messages they've heard on, um, on marriage and singles because a lot of them just feel as if, who will marry me here? And they just have that self-esteem, like, who will marry me here? And they don't understand that you can just that thought of scarcity. Because that's another barrier. Just that sort of scarcity that will marry me here. Listen to me. You don't need one million people to marry. Just one guy you're looking for. Just one guy you're looking for. And who tells you it has to be where you are? You can find him online. Because what I really believe is that the person you'll marry is already within your space. All you need is that connection to make it happen. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, thank you everyone. And it's really nice to connect with you. And let's pray together. And Lord Jesus Christ, I want to stretch forth your hands this way. And Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for all of my friends watching today. I pray that number one, you will give them clear direction. They will not make marital decisions that will destroy them. I pray for those in relationship, you sustain them in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we'll love and bless you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So say it again, say I'm lovable. Say it again, say I'm lovable. I, I find it easy to find love and to give love. I feel love is so, love is natural to me. I love myself. I'm so excited about my life. It's a good life. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you.